Hello! If you're watching this, it can only mean that you've enrolled in an online history course at the University of Texas at Dallas. My name is Dr. Ryan Pettengill, and I'll be your instructor for the semester. The point of this video is to familiarize yourself with the guidelines, expectations, and requirements for the semester. So, to that end, what we're really going to be doing here is going through the syllabus. If you haven't done this already, what I'd like you to do right now, put me on pause if need be, log into Blackboard, log into Blackboard, click on our class, and then what I'd like you to do is to click on the home page, and, and from there, from the home page, you'll see a place where you can download a copy of the syllabus. Again, put me on pause if you need to do that. In an online class, especially one like this one, communication is absolutely essential. At the top of the syllabus, you'll see my email address, and I check that address regularly. There's a good chance that if you send me a message Monday through Thursday before 3 p.m., um, I will respond on the same day. Now, if it's after 3 or if it's on the weekends, it'll be a little slower, but I take a lot of pride on getting back to people in a timely fashion. I'll also hold some office hours via Zoom this semester, and typically what I like to do is email a link out to the class um, at a certain point and let everybody know when I'll be holding those office hours, and anybody that wants to join me can uh, log into the room. I'll let you in. We can have that conversation. Sometimes we have that conversation collectively. It's actually very, very helpful. Anyway, that's the way that I'll be holding office hours for this semester. So as you can see, there's lots of different ways to get a hold of me. Now, this is a special topics course, and that special topic is labor and working class history in the United States. We're going to focus primarily on what most of us would consider to be modern American labor history. We're going to start out in the late 19th century, and we're going to take things all the way through the year 2000. The class is designed to provide students with a balanced and thorough education in comparative labor history. Like I said, we're going to begin with a conversation of the turmoil of the Gilded Age, and from there we'll navigate our way through the implications for working Americans when it came to the reform movements of the Progressive Era. We'll explore the great unionization drives of the New Deal Era. We'll note the changes of working class life brought about by the Cold War, and finally we'll assess the lives of the working class in a uh, post-industrial America. And all along the way, will interrogate the rapidly changing definition of terms like power structure, work, and descent, and will try to understand how these terms define working class life in the modern era. It's become almost a cliche of sorts to claim that uh, labor history is in this state of crisis, and I'm fighting myself not to take you down that road for a thorough discussion. Um, for much of the 20th century, labor historians treated the concept of the working class as an objective description. Factory workers were typically at the core element of this distinctive group. By the late 20th century, however, historians began to reevaluate their understanding of terms such as class and work and even factory. Noting that these terms were linguistically constructed and oftentimes culturally specific, scholars began to rethink their notions of class as well as power structures. While the state of crisis certainly implies a state or a sense of urgency, it also opens up new and interesting possibilities, especially with respect to a comparative approach to teaching and the study of labor and working class history. So, as students in this course will soon see, the meaning of working class history and the lived experiences of um, you know, workers throughout the American past will offer a more nuanced understanding of how working people experience life and uh, better situate labor history uh, in the broader context of American history. So does this sound like a plan? Um, I hope that you are looking forward to taking this class because I'm very, very much looking forward to uh, leading it. Well, now that we've got uh, what we're doing out of the way, what we're going to be studying uh, is on the record, so to speak, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about what kind of materials that you're going to need for the course. And to that end, I've got good news and better news. 
So the good news is there, there's only one book that I need you to buy, and that is a book by Edward Bellamy. It's entitled um, Looking Backward. It's a science fiction novel. Um, I think that you will enjoy it. It's certainly a good read. It's a short read, and the best news here is it's very, very cheap. That's the better news I was talking about. Um, I actually got a copy for myself um, a few weeks ago at uh, Half Price Books for $2.50. Um, I've also found a place that will let you read it for free. Um, it's online. Um, of course, the only hitch to that is that you, you can't mind, you can't let it be a problem if you're going to read this on your computer, on your phone, on your tablet. But whatever the case is, I've linked that in the Resources tab of Blackboard. But that's all you need to buy. You don't need to buy anything else. Now, don't get me wrong. We'll have plenty of things for you to read, but those are the materials. Uh, those materials, rather, are available for you in Blackboard. We'll actually talk a little bit about how you get a hold of those things uh, as this uh, welcome video continues to unfold. So the course resources uh, are the primary documents. Um, they're first-hand accounts of events that uh, happened in history, and actually they're what historians use to write history. I've broken these down for you according to time periods, and they're all available in the Resources tab of Blackboard. If you're in there right now, if you're poking around a little bit right now, you'll note that each module contains an array of sources and you'll be asked to kind of um, use these sources to complete assignments that range anything from weekly discussion forums to major assignments like the working class uh, in film project. So those are the resources and uh, now you know where to get them and the next thing that we need to talk about here is the lectures. Now by lectures I mean a podcast. I created Union Talkin' for this class, and there are hours and hours of content available for you, to you, for free on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you're getting your podcasts these days. So you can access Union Talking through Blackboard, actually. Just click the Lectures tab, and you'll see that there are five folders that correspond to important time periods in labor history. If you look down at the course schedule section of the syllabus, um, you can see that it indicates what episodes go with the content that we are studying on any given occasion. But there is one thing that I'd like to mention here, make very, very clear. Listening to these episodes is not mandatory. I repeat, it is not mandatory. These lectures are there for your own personal benefit. I'll never test you over them, um, nor is there an actual assignment that's, that's, that's actually tied to them. Now, all that being said, these podcasts will uh, really prove to be, I think anyway, helpful for you when it comes to laying a foundation and establishing a context uh, for the various assignments. Um, we'll be completing over the course of the semester numerous assignments, and if you don't have any background with them, and I suspect some of, the, some of you do not, um, that's, that's really going to be limiting when it comes to your ability to be effective uh, when you're analyzing these resources. So those lectures are there for your benefit. The course schedule breaks down what, uh, what lectures, what episodes go with what time period. So take a look at those when you have an opportunity. But on the most basic level, that's how you will complete uh, the course work for this, for this semester. Uh, at this point, what everybody should be asking yourself is, how do you walk out of this class with the, with the best possible grade, the most highest level of satisfaction, and uh, not, not, not breaking your neck in the process of doing so? How do, you, how do you walk out of here with the best grade possible by putting the least amount of work into it? So the good news to that end is there's a lot of ways to work smarter and not necessarily harder. For example, the easiest thing that you can do when it comes to uh, being successful in this class would be completion of the weekly discussion forums. Each week, students are going to be asked to participate in one discussion forum, and there are a total of five discussion forums throughout the course of the semester. The question will, uh, for, for any one of these forums, will involve 
um, a topic that's under examination for the week. And you're going to use those primary documents that I was referring to in the uh, resources tab of Blackboard to help you answer those questions. Again, if you're poking around in Blackboard, if you take a look at some of those questions, you can see that you're going to have your choice to select whatever sources, whatever documents that you feel will best help you answer that question. So it's not as if I, I specifically mandate one source or another. You do have a lot of leeway to that end. So you can see this is a very effective way of racking up a good deal of points. Each one of these um, each one of these discussion forums is going to be worth two percentage points of your cumulative grade for a grand total of 10 percentage points. Now, the next assignment that I need you to be aware of would be the Labor History and Comics Project. Um, as you're going to see, labor and working class organizations have been effectively, uh, or very effective rather, with uh, when it comes to telling their story through, through the use of comics and, and even later on, comic books. Um, you'll see what I mean once we get to that section of the class, but for the time being, what I'm going to ask you to do here is to construct an actual comic or a comic strip. And uh, you're going to use this comic or comic strip to illuminate an important time period, concept, event, what have you, in American labor history. And you're going to use one or more of those resources as sort of the inspiration or sort of the factual basis to, to kind of launch the comic um, in, 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 in the assignment. Now, as you're going to see, there are um, alternative assignments that you may use, that you may complete if you don't like the idea of uh, completing a comic. But uh, I'm really hopeful that you'll take me up on this assignment. And I, I think, pretty sure, that you'll enjoy doing it. So the next assignment that I want to make you aware of here would be the Working Class in Film Project. I've prepared a list of films for students to view. You can choose any one that your heart desires. All of these films um, have at least something to do with uh, some aspect of working class life in the United States. But after viewing the film, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to construct a paper that analyzes how it portrays specific events in labor history and not necessarily to scholars like me or you, but to, to the masses, to moviegoers, to average Americans. You're going to use the film, and you're also going to use those course resources that I keep telling you about, all of those primary documents that I've uploaded there in, 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 in Blackboard for you. And this is going to uh, be involved. It'll be going into your, your, your project for this paper. If you want to know a little bit more about uh, what you're going to be doing for this project, take a look uh, inside the Working Class in Film Project folder, which is available to you in the Assignments tab of Blackboard. This assignment is going to be worth 20 percentage points of your cumulative grade. Next up, we've got the Labor Feminism Project. You're going to construct a six to eight page, six to eight page paper that analyzes uh, the Statement of Purpose for the National Organization for Women, or NOW. And you're going to ask yourself, you're going to try to analyze uh, how work has changed throughout the course of the middle, the middle decades of the 20th century. Uh, you're going to ask yourself and analyze how work intersects with sex. And you're going to analyze what these changes suggest when it comes to the broader calls for reform uh, over the course of the 20th century. Uh, just like the other projects, if you want to know a little bit more, if you want a little bit more guidance in this, there are instructions, there are detailed instructions, and they're also available to you in the Assignments tab of Blackboard. Just scroll down to the Labor Feminism folder, and you, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. This assignment is also worth 20 percentage points of your cumulative grade. Lastly, we've got your term project. And your term project is what you need looking backward for, okay? You're going to be reading looking backward throughout the course of the semester. I don't need you to be through chapter 5 or chapter 7 or chapter whatever by any point in the semester. It's basically read at your own pace. But what you're going to do is you're going to kind of compare and contrast what Bellamy has to say as far as what the year 2000 looks like. You, you, you'll find out soon enough that that's the year that this guy wakes up. 
But in any case, you're going to uh, find out all of these reforms that's been implemented. And what I want you to do is to kind of use that book and compare and contrast it to some of the ways that workers and the organizations, labor unions or working class organizations, have influenced public policy, have influenced politicians, and have influenced uh, the reform movements that uh, have kind of come and gone throughout the course of 20th century American history. In other words, how have workers and the organizations that represent them, how have they shaped life here in America by the dawn of the 20th century? Now, this is the major assignment of the semester, so it's going to be worth 25 percentage points of your cumulative grade. So, those are the assignments for the semester. And if you scroll down the syllabus just a little bit further, you're going to see my grading scale. Now, let me say this. We're at the beginning of the semester, so let me go on the record. I am not the guy who has a student end the semester with an 89.99999 I give them a B. No, that, that's, that's not the way that I work things. Naturally, I will round up in a case like that. Uh, but close enough is not good enough. Understand that, that if you end the course with an 84, do not be surprised when a B shows up on your, on your, on your transcripts. Okay, So close enough is not good enough. Uh, there's some other things that I'd like you to be familiar with. They're there in the syllabus. I'm going to allow you to kind of read those when you have an opportunity. That's all I have for you for the time being. So for right now, what I wanted to say, again, more or less repeat this, is I'm really looking forward to leading this class. I'm looking forward to getting to know all of you as, as best I can in an online format. Very much looking forward to working with all of you. Uh, so I hope that you're ready to get going. And to that end, the best thing that you can do uh, to, to, to get going and move in the right direction, go into Blackboard and, and click on the Lectures tab. Uh, listen to the first episode of our podcast, and that's going to move you in the right direction. Uh, once again, thank you for watching. Good luck this semester, everyone.